Can you feel it in your nose? Is this going to tickle? You got a T-Max on him? Right. Uh, I'm taking our pen. Yes, guys. 38. 38. Okay. Well, uh, he was a little warmer. We uh, lowered the bear hugger. Okay. Let me know whenever you're ready for sign-up. Yeah, I'm ready. Absolutely. How are you feeling? Okay. Feeling all right? Thank you. Uh, it's still a little out of it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is a 25-year-old male, uh -huh. status post uh, lab happy. Okay. Uh, he got about 500 of crystalloid LR. He has 18 gauge in the right AC, no A-lines, general anesthesia, relaxed reverse, ET70. Um, no issues going in, no issues coming out. Okay. Surgery went well. Uh, no known past medical history, no known family history. This was from, okay. He did have a tonsillectomy as a child. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all we got on it. He has been a little tacky uh, coming out. We did give him about 0.5 of the lot in the room. Oh, right. uh, it looks like he's uh, still a little tacky. You do have post-op orders. Okay. All right, what questions do you have? Um, so his vitals in the back. Yeah, so he was a little tacky, tacky from okay. the young male. Just got out of right. surgery, gave him a little bit of analgesia, but still a little bit of tacky. But that's why we gave him more orders for that. Awesome. But otherwise, he won't manage for Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and call the um, PACU right. resident okay. just to come take a look at him. Okay. Can you hi, hi, this is Elizabeth in Bay 10. Um, I have a patient that came out of um, OR3, status post and appendectomy. His temperature is elevated and also he is tachycardic. Um, could you please come take a look at him? Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm the back your rest hand. Okay. Um, I just got this patient from the OR. Mm -hmm. His status post, um, a laparoscopic appendectomy. Okay. His only prior um, history is he had a tonsillectomy as a child. Um, when he came out, his heart rate has been tachycardic in the 130s, and his temperature was 38.3. Um, they said in the back he did fine, um, didn't have any issues with pressures or um, heart rate. Um, so. Trying to get him to wake up some. Hey, you be open your eyes with me? Are you on any pain right now? No pain? Okay. Any medical history? No medical history other than um, just having a tonsillectomy as a child. And then his end title is elevated and his heart rate is still in the 130s. Um, when he came to the vacuum, he was like that? Or he was in the 130s heart rate. Um, we just got him hooked up to the end title, and his temp was 38.3. His second card is in the back as well. Okay. So he got the louder for me. Got the louder for me. How long was that? Um, that was about 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, how much fluid he got uh, in trial? He got um, a liter of LR. Mm -hmm. And he does have a Foley, and it kind of looks very dark, the urine that he's put out oh, so okay. far. Okay. So, so I don't know if maybe he was dehydrated or something else yeah. could be going on. Okay. Yeah, I don't like that entire on that. Uh, heart rate's really trending up for yeah. him. Okay, and that's in your pressure when was Yes. Alright, good. Just okay. measure. Just measure the temperature, yeah. Right, 38.5. 38. Yeah, he's like a cardiac. So it doesn't feel like he's... Uh, let me call for some help. Okay. okay. Let me call my, my attorney and okay. see who else around. Hi, sir. This is Anoy. I'm ready to pack you. I uh, have a patient who's coming for an appy. Um, he's to be guarded at 130s. Um, Refresher uh, is 139 over 82 with a map of 92. He came with the title turning up. Right now, it's 54.0. And the last temperature was 38.3. Um, he got one liter of fluid in trial. He got dilated 0.5 and half a foley, and it looks like the unit is dark. Um, do you mind to come to the patio on Mobile 10? 
So this could be sepsis because the patient has an intra-abdominal infection. But he looks good. Yeah. You know what I'm feeling? I'm getting towards the answer. Okay. Yeah. And he you feeling okay, buddy? Okay. What's your name? Can you hear me? <laughs> buddy? Okay. So um, his heart rate never came down? Never came it down. His title kept climbing? Continued to climb, and his right. temperature is also climbing as well. Stats. He's not been, been lower than that? No. Okay, and how many liters of oxygen is he on? He is just on two liters of oxygen. Okay, very well. Just so just we could have on the sideline. If you could give me a glide scope, ET2, just have in the background. Let's go ahead and get an MH cord. Uh, uh, let's get an MH cord and make sure that attending is Okay. Responding. Yeah, well, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's currently not responsive. He does respond to noxious stimuli. The patient's been hyperthermic, entitled to climbing. Tack drops off 130, given quite by a lot of times too. Fluids are in around 500. I did call you, I did also I said, call for a glide scope ET tube and an MH card to be in the background. Perfect. His temperature is 40. Temperature 40 is climbing. All right. Should we activate yeah, this protocol? Or, because yes, he doesn't have any thyroid issues, he doesn't have any best medical history. There's no growing infection. He went into normal. That was a uh, pre op normal. And it's the first time having an incision for him. No, he's had a tonsillectomy as a kid. Okay. okay. And no trouble with that. Do we know the family history or anything? The family history, I don't know. Okay. Is he rigid or anything? Yeah, so he's basically not. Okay. Yeah, it's reasonable to start image card. We get ID and we'll start. Yeah, we have the 18. Would you like another? And we'll start with intubation, rapid cooling patient, and start dentrolate. Okay. Do we have the intubation okay. stuff? Yeah. All right, the MH card is here. How, how much do you want to give them? Do you want to give 2.5 mix per cake? Yes. Do you want to get first bolus once? Yes. Okay. We can start with all this, then we can prepare for intubation, okay. and we can sedate this. All right, very well. 100% oxygen. Let's go up on the flows. Okay. Yes. And uh, we need extra help just to run this room. Yes. Secure IV and A-line simultaneous. Yes, and then if we can have an A-line a line kit, I'll okay. send the A-line form, please. All right. We can start with intubation, getting okay. then and the... Uh, Work that working on other ideas. Okay, very well. You, uh, how about you guys do the second IV? We'll do the A line. It's very good. Okay. All right, very well. Okay, very well. Okay. Uh, at least, sorry, they're not his weight. Health rate, Yeah, he's 70 kilos. 70 kilos, average. Many them hypertermia helpline just to inform them and yes. start starting the first. Yes, and then let's inform family too, please. Yes. So for 70 kilos, the first dose of dentrolin is going to be 175. All right, let's go ahead and bowl it. Let's go ahead and bowl us that right now. Okay, and we can start to uh, actively cooling the patient in the meanwhile and see the temperature. What do you want to use for cooling? Oh, uh, we can do the cooling blankets for now. Yeah, and you have cooling cool, blankets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the patient other way. We'll have the maybe. But uh, the change uh, the pulse change. Yeah. Really? All right, I have a pulse. Okay. Can we start uh, amping around for the patient? Can you look for the central pulse, please? Go ahead, get a coat as well. I have a pulse. I have a pulse. Okay. Push, yeah. push the dentrally. Push the dentrally, please. Push the dentrally. Okay. Uh, dentrally. Yes. Prepare for intubation. Right. And we can also. Yeah. Stats are dropping. Okay. Positive ventilation, please. Good. Okay. Can I get some asthma low? Yes. No. Let's see the response of parameter on. We can get bicarb insulin. Can we do a point of care glucose and a point of care uh, electrolyte? Like okay. You want me to get an ABG? Let's see if that's an A1. Okay. With magnesium, please. Okay. 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 Excellent. Okay. Why should I try some Esmolol for okay. detection? Esmolol, no calcium channel blockers. Okay. okay. So, network, and I'm giving the ABG. If you'll take that to the lab. Yes. Plug in. All right. Esmolol is in. Esmolol. Okay. How much did you give? Can we have all this stuff? Can we leave this off? No. Can we also get the emitter on? And can you can someone start making a note of the pulse? I'm going to look at your belly. Uh, I have the SHA result. Right. pH is 7.1, okay. CR2 is 7.6, okay. O2 is 90, BE is negative 3, and HCR3 is 21. Okay. 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 Okay.
is coming. This one out of biker. Yes. 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 Keep hyperventilating the patient. Patient is in acidosis. It's a mixed acidosis. Hyperventilation. That, 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 yes. Metabolic. Yeah. All right. Have we given any holding. Do we have electrolytes and magnesium level? Give 10 more of Esmolol, please. 10 more of Esmolol. Second dose. Entitled down from 54 to 50. Both same. Sats holding. Able than ever, please stable. Do we have blood glucose level on this? It was 113, but his potassium is 5.7. Potassium is how much? 5.7. Okay, GJ, let's get a 12 lead, and you okay. want to go ahead and treat hyperkalemia? That's your hyperkalemia protocol. So we'll start with insulin right now. Um, he can get 10 units of insulin with 25 milligrams worth of uh, dextrose. Okay. You want to give calcium or no? We calcium chloride. All right. Chloride. No, no, he doesn't. Calcium chloride do right now. No central line. Uh, 10 milligrams of calcium chloride over yeah. 10 minutes. Calcium chloride. Pulse is doing well. Have we done the second dentroline dose? Yes. Okay, yes. very well. So we're two dentroline doses in. Pulse is coming down. End titles coming down. What's the temperature right now? T, t, t max, please. Um, 38.8. What was the last one? The previous one was 40.1. Very well. Coming down. Okay, very well. Let's go have we inform family. Um, the nurse from the OR is going to get in touch with the family. Okay, let's go ahead and reach out to ICU. He's going to okay. be the ICU admin. This patient is not to go anywhere else. Okay. All right. Uh, right now, he's been doing okay. He's responding to treatment, yes. so we'll hold off infusion. We'll see how he's done. Yes, sir. Do they need to have a uh, image card to the ICU? Yes. 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 And nurses, okay. please put this on documentation for this patient and, of course, any of his family members. Okay. This needs to be made aware. And also inform the surgery team that this is the event that happened. Okay. And the yes, and also for the primary team, let them know this patient will be testing. Okay. Uh, there's certain testing information that needs to be done to see his susceptibility along with family as well. Okay. Can we sedate him a little bit yes. and just talk to him? We'll keep him intubated. Which agent would you like? The light sedation, like liquid or presidential, what would you like? Start with medazolam now okay. because he right. knows we recover from our right. and then we'll right. take it from there. Okay. okay. Now, are we going to transport intubated? Yes. Okay. All right. Very well. We'll transport the ICU. Let okay. him know he's been in sedation and event. Okay. All right. Charge nurse has called the um, MICU. MICU has a bed, and we are headed up to the ICU. And the title's coming down, also stabilizing. We'll repeat the set of labs there, including magnesium, because the yes, chances of... And the potassium and a 12 liter over there. the please. potassium's come down after the insulin. And a 12 liter over there. Yes. This is the patient's wife, you guys. How's Alfie doing? Hey. He um, had some trouble after surgery. His temperature became very high. Do you know if um, he has any family history of having trouble after anesthesia? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so we may need to look into that if possible. Um, but the doctors will update you on kind of our procedures that have happened down here in the recovery room. But he's going to be transferred to the ICU. Did he like to die on the table? No. So he's going to the ICU. Not coming home today. But the anesthesiologist and um, the primary surgery team will talk with you when you get up to the ICU. Okay. He's going to be okay. My name is Dr. Hassan, I'm the anesthesia team. It's very nice to meet you. We were with him the whole time. So the surgery room and all the surgical team will speak to you soon. But when we, when we took him to the recovery unit, where they go for a little bit before they go to the floor, he started developing a little bit fever. His pulse went up. We believe that there's a certain condition called malignant hyperthermia. Um, it's susceptible to people sometimes who have a family history. And because he told us from his history that he was a doctor, we don't really know this biological family history. So we treat the condition okay, with certain medication that naturally that helps treat the condition. You do see a breathing to bed. That's for his lungs to heal and to make sure we get something called EG. It's a lab value that we measure from the artery to tell us how his insides are doing.
chaos, blood bodies, and everything. He's going to be going to the ICU for okay, the night. Okay? Yeah, because when the patients are breathing on this breathing device, they have to be monitored in ICU because it's a one to one nursing patient setting. They cannot go to the floor. Dr. Devine, I'm really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. He's been doing okay with responding to treatment. We have to just make sure he continues to have a trajectory. There's a malignant hypothermia hotline, so they'll be contacting you. They'll be walking you into detail once he recovers from it about the testing for the children and how to proceed for any anesthesia for uh, Our working diagnosis is like this. He'll be tested. So he has to go for any surgery in future. You have to make sure you tell them this has happened so they can take precaution so that this can be avoided. Uh, right now, other than that, he should slowly wake up for you, but we want him to recover from the acute event. So that's why we we'll keep him sedated. Once he gets settled in the ICU, they will allow the family member, you can be there, but I'm not sure how much he'll do it because he's still sedated. Do you have any questions we can ask? Just from the upside. So this is not the only issue. This falls from your fault. This can happen, and no one, no one can know. Okay, and especially with the enormous history. But I rest assured you right now, he's doing well from a vital sense. Okay. Okay. okay, well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Well. Feel free to call us at any time. Please come by. Yeah. yeah. Does my patient have an uh, MH reaction or not? Most people think about the muscle rigidity, but they forget the big picture. So 90% of we have 100 patients who have an MH reaction, 90% lots of them will have the hydrocarbon, which is the entire series is out. So that's very sensitive. If your patient does not have hypercarbia, it's unlikely in the The second one is the tachycardia, 70% of them. So if your patient is not hypercarbic, I mean the entire CO2 is not up, and the heart rate is not up, it's unlikely to be an H reaction. Then you go to uh, uh, in rapidly increasing temperature. So temperature is starting with 40 degrees Celsius and staying there. It's not, it's not very, that's around 50%. But you start at 38 and you quickly to go 40 and then 41. That's around 60% of those patients. So that's a very solid sign. When you come to muscle rigidity, it's around 50% of them have it. So you don't have muscle rigidity, you still can have an H reaction. So those are very important points. So which patient do you think they may have it? Uh, uh, hypercarbic, the entire CO2 is high, tachycardia, and then rapidly increasing temperature. Those are very sensitive. Once you have those, you need to blow the muscle A and eat out there. Another thing is most people think like, oh, if my patient have an aesthetic before and didn't have any reaction, then, then it's unlikely. No, it's actually, I think the point is, yes, it's a, uh, what you call it, a stomach with, 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 with dominant with variable ventricles. So, not everybody have the mutation can have the reaction, and even the people who have the mutation, they may have quite few anesthetic before and they didn't have a reaction. There is a documented case that was sent to the NH hotline. A patient had 30 anesthetic before without any problem. Number 31, he had an MH activation. So how many anesthetic before? It doesn't matter. So it can happen at any time. We don't want to go into the like where is the mutation and all that. The main thing is to once to once you once you recognize it, call more experts, and then you need to start the treatment very quickly. The main the main treatment is supportive to the patient. So it's the blood pressure, it's the heart rate. If they, if they go to arrhythmias, you can give amiodarone, which we normally give. You can give beta blockers like Ismolo, but you should not give them any calcium channel blockers that like diltiazem or forever. You should not give them any sodium channel blockers like lidocaine. Those are contraindicated. Uh, hyper, hyper, uh, hyperkalemia, high potassium is very common. So what's the MH reaction? There's too much calcium going inside the muscle cells and there's a lot of contraction that will release, release a lot of potassium. That potassium is very dangerous for the heart. It can put the patient to uh, VTAC like this patient or VFIP or any other uh, arrhythmias. So it's very important to treat the arrhythmia and to treat the hyperkalemia that includes potassium with the usual. Like you guys did the insulin and the glucose, you could uh, you give the calcium, which is very really good to stabilize the muscle cells, and then you can go more for the more like uh, virtually uh, like uh, albuterol pills. What about the bicarbs? The bicarb is appropriate. Uh, magnesium, they have magnesium that helps to stabilize the heart uh, muscles. Uh, we didn't say what agents we were using. 
Okay. So, so that's going to ask you what are the what are the anesthetic reactions that may trigger the HIV actions? The inhalational anesthetic are the are what we use in there. Sevoflurane and isoflurane and dysfluorine are those those the three anesthetic gases that we use uh, those days. The three of them when uses the other one other yes. inhalation agent is saxonitrile. So all those patients who come emergently to the trauma bay and they get intubated very quickly, we use we use saxonitrile because that helps us to prevent aspiration. But if we give it to the wrong patient without knowing, we may induce an immediate reaction. The main treatment is dantrolene. The dantrolene uh, is used historically. We have a, we used, we used to have a very diluted formula that was very painful to give. Almost every dose you need to give, the you need to give them like around 500 ml of fluid with it. It's hardly mixed. But the one that we have in our hospital, we have the more expensive one. But actually, we should open this card and we show it to the. So it's a thing. Yeah, we should. The, the Rhinodex is the one that we have in this hospital, which is a concentrated form. It's a concentrated form. Uh, what is the dose? What is the dose? 2.5 milligram per kilo. So 2.5 milligram per kilo. So if you have a 70 kilo patient, which you are, you're a 70 kilo, it comes to around 170 milligram uh, that you need to get the first dose. The vial is 250. Yeah. So the vial is 250 milligrams. So one vial that you can mix with 10 ml would be a one dose. It's great. We're using the, the real medicine here compared to 500 ml with the diluted form. So we appreciate our pharmacy and whoever made it happen. So the scarf has two doses only, and the patient may get three or four. So you can go up to 12 milligrams per kilo in, in one day. So we have only two two doses here. Once you open this one, I suggest you just talk to the central pharmacy and say, like, hey, we have MH activation. We, we tapped into our MH card. We may need more uh, dentally. And you said that how often? Every, every three to five. Every three to five minutes. The and then you can you can you can add infusion. Yes, the case is the same. And then infusion now. It doesn't break. It's very important the active cooling that the team did here. You cool them through through uh, exposure to ambient ambient air, uh, cooler IV fluids. You can irrigate the bladder with with, with cold uh, cold fluids. You irrigate the stomach with cold fluid. Cooling is very helpful. Uh, very very important. And there's a blanket cooler. Questions? You can you can see like how frequently this happens. Okay, so there's variable incidence rates. That's the one that's the most most uh, again the one is one in every hundred thousand anesthetic. So if you do enough cases, you get a half one because it's just left. So it's one in every hundred thousand. And the hospitals that do those kind of more image activations, they do very well when it happens to them. The hospitals that don't, they get paralyzed when this happens to them. They lose their patient or they really come back around. Yeah.